there's German owl sounding off over there somewhere it's pretty nice eh? the sound of an owl the more porks we have here are like really cool I think they're called a ruru is the the Maori name ruru and they they kind of go like woo woo Anyways, it's just, I was just reminiscing before, like, hey, shit, there's a, uh, <laughs> there's a trail. I don't know if you can see that. I don't know if it will persist or not. Uh, I can see the stars, so, you know, in the mind of the psychopath, it's probably a, a crime scene where you can actually see the stars. I've got to, like, spray it away. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, like, uh, I was just reminiscing before, like, about videos I made last winter, like they're pretty fucking raw and wild compared to these ones. You know, these ones I'm I'm kind of pussying out in this, to be honest. Like, it's easier when the boots off the the throat and you're not being like, you know, when they're not trying to like end you, pretty much with their zuzet sun crap. I don't know how many people know about all that that watch this channel, but. It's it's pretty hard to just all oh, play it cool, you know. This is one thing I see in the truth community. No one really wants. Well, I can't say no one, but you know, many people I watch they don't want to show emotion. They want to be this like Zen monk who's like Namaste, brother. It's okay. Like, well, all these crimes are happening, and I don't know if if those people are actually being put through the targeting or not, but. Maybe they are, and they're just this absolute Zen master. But um, you know, I challenge a. I, I'd love to see some grand monk stand in front of an Elrad and take the hit, and just like do his like, you know, Hadouken, like Street Fighter fucking prana burst or whatever, and like neutralize the, you know, the um, however many hundred gigahertz they're hitting you with. But I don't think many people are going through that stuff where they're literally putting you through this ritual torture trying to like whatever they're trying to do to destroy you um, but yeah back last winter I was just pretty much being savage with these videos and you know putting some some I believe like genuine fucking fire into it genuine emotion like you know righteous fucking anger um, and I was, I was ranting about um, the Joker movie, if you've seen that one, the, the last so-called, you know, last of the Batman kind of series where it was like a prequel where you see what created the Joker. And I really resonated with him, like, and under, you know, I could, I could empathize with him, why he fucking went through that why he like broke bad i guess you would say you know i was just thinking like what's he meant to do what are you meant to do there and i kind of loved how the movie showed it it showed like how how fucked he got you know and he had he had no out things just got worse and worse and then I don't know if you've seen the movie, I probably shouldn't give any spoiler alerts, but um, I was kind of surprised by the people who who said he was in the wrong and um, you know, there's, I went on like Quora and I was reading the reviews about it and the comments and you know, there's a lot of people had absolutely no understanding of him or empathy for him and they they said, like, violence is never the answer, you know, and um, they even saw him as a psychopath, and, you know, he was like a beautiful, lovely, you know, sensitive person, and then they, all these losers came out and, like, crushed him, and there was no, no help or support for him, and, um, you know, and then he, he got his, like, 
reactive abuse vengeance kind of thing going on and and I was just watching the movie going fair play to you you know I get it <laughs> but you know if you, if you haven't been like squirming under the the boot of you know cluster B monsters and they're all just looking on like what's your problem you know what, what's wrong and they never see their boot on your fucking back of your head <laughs> you can't understand the, the fury that that creates I'll see if I can find it, I don't know if I'll post it I, you know there's, there's this shame program that still lingers a bit it's not nice to be seen like I wasn't in a fit of raging fury or anything I'll definitely never post those videos they're just for me to look back, but but um, <laughs> I think that one was ab absolutely appropriate level of emotion. How's someone meant to behave while they're being like literally waterboarded with frequencies and tortured, you know, f with no end in sight and no acknowledgement of it? And you're in a society that that um you know it's always doing that virtue signal like they have their anti-bullying campaign see something say something you know and then then you, then you have police that are like well we're inclined to follow up the complaint and it's so like, obviously when you're on the watch list it doesn't matter how many complaints you make they blow you off you know <laughs> they never follow that up I don't know how it all works, you know, like, people seemingly can be brain hacked with that, um, like the Barry Trower, you know, he's that English geezer who's, you know, people, if you're really fucking weary of everyone, you're like, he's all, he's a shill, he's, you know, controlled, blah, 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 but I don't think he is. You know, he, he talks about, like, Tetra, the Tetra thing, that is a communication system that has had a really bad effect on on some police like making them more violent and yeah and more um there was a lot more domestic violence incidents after that stuff after that infrastructure was put into the um into their cars so i don't know if they're all like brain hacked or if they're knowingly just um you know when they refuse to to help you or, or to what's the word they refuse to investigate your complaint whether they literally are just told like oh this guy's on the watch list don't intervene or don't help him or whatever I don't know not sure I've always wondered about that you know but it's one of the one of the constant wonders when you're going through the targeted individual thing it's like when people do street theater and stuff um, I don't get much of that I only had a, a few instances but you don't know is it that they're mind controlled is it that they're being paid and they just you know they never tell anyone I don't think average people are that good at keeping secrets but you never know um, is it the demons is it who knows? I had had one weird instance in a bank. This was during the thick of the just like all out trying to overwhelm me kind of stage about five years ago and I went into a bank to make a deposit of like twenty dollars and you know they asked me for ID and because of the whole money laundering problem and so I gave him the ID and then then she was like yeah and, and how did you earn the money and I was like what how did I what yeah how did you earn the money was it from this was it from that and I was like are you fucking serious and she was like well watch your language you know I might have to call security and I was like yeah well, you fucking call security and I I raised my voice you know I was like you probably can't imagine the amount of steam that gets built up from when 
you know, months and months of prolonged harassment and um, and she didn't. But I looked around because there was a queue of like five people behind me and they would have been about five meters away. They were looking down at their phones and I was amazed. And it does make me wonder if it literally is like the, the Stephen King cell hive mind thing because I don't know how you could not look up at the commotion. It was weird. It's kind of like those um, creepies that know all about mind control. They, they go on about putting people to sleep and stuff. Literally it's like this mess, like hypnotism going on. This is other weird, weird instance. I don't give a fuck about sharing this stuff. Like, maybe I'll put slightly different tweak on it, a little bit of misinformation in there, just in case you know anyone tries to use the story against me, and then I'll recognise that bit of misinformation and be like, ah, you know, and I'll, I'll know where they got it from or something. I'll put my little little trap in there, but um, I don't mind about sharing like this. I kind of wish everyone would, and that way we could figure out a bit more about what's going on, and you know, people could support each other, as I said before. So yeah, there's a, a far, far, far stranger incident. Um, for me, it's a really strange one because being a man, like you generally don't, I don't get any interest from women at all. And um, I'm just laughing because it was so overt and bizarre. I know there's that whole like Jezebel spirit thing and like it's a spirit of seduction and it did seem like that. I, I go into the supermarket and there's this quite a, a pretty looking girl there and she would have been like 25 and you know I'm like a lot older than that and anyway she like she would just stop what she was doing and stare at me it was really like overt and bizarre you know in the middle of a, a busy supermarket it, it really did seem kind of demonic in a way like it was like, damn, why is she doing that? Like, and it was, she gave me this like seductive stare, and it was kind of flattering. It was like, oh, you know, what's going on here? But um, I was really fucking wary at that time because I'd heard all about, um, I'd heard all about the, you know, people having handlers and stuff. They'll, they'll bring a woman into your life and she'll be your like NPD kind of handler and you know continue to fuck with you and so I just ignored her and um, it went on for about three weeks you know like she just stare But it was like my inner Admiral, Admiral Akbar was like, it's a trap, <laughs> you know. It's not falling for that. Like this is the first time this has ever happened, like in the last 20 years or something. <laughs> nice try, Matrix. You know, you could at least see me one that was like 10 years older and, uh, you know, a lot less easier on the eye and then it would be convincing at least. That, that maybe it was legit but um, I don't know maybe that was a little temptation and I, I dodged it anyway and I yeah and you know people go like the universe gives you just what you need at the time and maybe but uh, you know there, there were actually two more instances with, with ladies that I met and they both had the same name and they were both like exactly kind of where I was at that stage in terms of uh, just in terms of life I guess and it, you could say oh it was it was your perfect like opportunity for support and healing and this and that but, but um, I couldn't take the risk eh because I've heard of other one other guy who was targeted that I know in South Africa um, 
he met a girl and then she started to hear voices after she met him so it's like this contagious mental illness bullshit um, so I guess they're like beaming frequencies into her head and he he was also hearing voices uh, I've never heard voices by the way I don't know why they don't do that to me I'm I'm, I'm very relieved because yeah it's that yeah my heart goes out to anyone going through that because it's just another another level of torment that I couldn't imagine Um, but yeah, anyways, this, this guy said his, he woke up one night and his missus was over him in bed with an axe trying to kill him. So I was like, ugh, cautionary tale, I'm not going to have a missus. <laughs> you know, the, this kind of stuff, eh, this is why I get like, fervently rabid about the mental health training and, you know, belief system whatever you want to call it being used to cover up these these absolutely bonkers crimes against um against the population you know guinea pigs they want to whatever reason they want to test shit out on them or they just want to be sadistic you know get their narcissistic supply whatever it is i don't know i don't know what happened to him that south african guy I missed his channel, I tried to find it and it was just deleted. He was he was a ballsy guy, he's just going all out, like he lived in this pretty rough place in like Johannesburg and he's surrounded by these gang stalkers and he had to get, you know, the burglar bars as he called it, like he had to put fucking burglar bars on his windows. I think that's quite a normal thing over there and they would like steal the burglar bars and you know the all these like car fools of people like coming into his building and harassing him and shit but yeah he, he took it like a fucking he's a legend that guy I don't know what happened to him hope he's alright but yeah anyway just back to the like meeting these women there's no fucking way I would have gone ahead with any of it and you know, pe people might say like, oh, that was your opportunity to heal and, you know, the universe provided you with some ladies and you turned them down and, or turned the opportunity down and, I mean, I would just say like, it's not worth the risk to have another life ruined with this fucking, you know, this shitty menticide Zerzetsang fucking stuff. It just stinks, you know, and, and there's never any like conclusive thing on what it's all about you know the ones who should be living in isolation are the ones who do this stuff but unfortunately they're running society and you know peacocking about <laughs> It's a peacock fountain, that one. See the little peacock, peacocks up there? Yeah, they're like peacocking about in their fancy suits and... Uh, yeah, I, I don't know what the deal is, whether... How many people are aware of, of this kind of weird... scapegoaty bullshit? I'm not sure. Is another ginkgo tree. It's really lovely colours on it. Uh, the yellow over there is pretty stunning. This is the other shitty thing about this. Um, what was I going to say? Just my mind's gone blank. <laughs> There were two paradise ducks having a little rave under here the other night. I 
don't know if the animals get trou troubled by all that shit. Not sure. I suppose at least they can leave. The two paradise ducks were just down here. They seem to be enjoying themselves. Um, yeah, I was just going to say like the other thing with the, the targeting thing, targeted individual thing is like it's so varied that it's really hard to find someone else who's going through the similar thing. So yeah, it's like a miracle to find another that you would get on with and Uh, there was one, one lady who got really fucking bad chemical sensitivity and electro sensitivity and I don't know where she's gone, she deleted all her videos and she was a fucking strong, she was a legend in my opinion, like she kept making her videos and you know despite all the mockery, that mockers that come and that bot, like a chief handler, he, he tends to come and like Pre, you know, predate or be a predator to the to those who are more vulnerable, to those he can like you know get under the skin of and milk a bit of loose out of. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm kind of surprised how few people seem to get the chemical sensitivity. I don't want to say like oh you know so and so is a fake a fake targeted individual or not, but. Um, because with that electromagnetic uh, torture, I don't know what else you can call it, remote neural monitoring or whatever, um, you know these are just terms I hear, I don't know how you can concretely say this is what it is or whatever, but anyway with, the, with that amount of continual electrification of your, of your body, I would have thought everyone would be getting, everyone who's going through that would get chemical sensitivity and electro sensitivity I got a really fucking bad eh like to the point I'd have to like hold my breath when I was filling up the gas um, at the station and I went through the fucking gas station I went to the gas station one night and the car was empty out of gas so I had to go there and the tanker was there and I was like oh fuck this is gonna be bad all the vapors they were like refilling the, the big tank and so I, I went home, I took my chances and then the next day it was the same trap like I went and the car was empty and the fucking tanker was there again and I was like oh shit I'm gonna have to do it or the car's gonna run out of gas and fuck man I took a breath and it was like it felt like fire going through all the veins of my fucking body and I was like oh this shit can't be good you know and then the fury, the, the fury is that you go to the doctor and they're like, oh, we, we just can't figure out this chemical sensitivity or electro sensitivity. It's all in your head, you know, and there's this giant fucking gaslight for decades. You know, they're never going to figure it out because they're not allowed to. They're not allowed to know fuck all about the electromagnetic spectrum and, you know, microwaves effect on the body and that. You know, and all they do is like, they'll start to increase the gaslight if you dare talk about it. I even said to one of the locum doctors, because I went through all these different doctors, which was strange in itself and very suspicious. And I said to her like, oh, I know we can't really say much about microwave stuff or, you know, the frequencies. And she said, no, no, you can talk about it. It's like big time, you know, trap. <laughs> trying to like coax you in and then that same doctor um, I think it was in that same appointment she started to ask me these random fucking questions like does your television talk to you I said no like I just gave her this look like I know this is what this is about and no 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 and then we went on to just uh, you know the medical stuff but only reason I was going to them was just because I needed the medical certificate for um, 
you know, the unemployment benefit. And yeah, it's a, it's a lonely fucking road to go. Like, no one really knows how to help you with that chemical sensitivity. I've spent a lot of time on these, going around YouTube channels and videos and that, and no one's talking about DARPA or like, you know, directed energy or any of that stuff. Yeah, it was really fucking bad. I, was, I felt like a dog, I guess, like with the ultra sensitive smell. I could smell out where all the all the ganja houses were. Right? That was one, you know, convenient superpower I, I had. Not that I'd ever do anything about that. But, um, it, it was quite a, quite an interesting experience. Like when I wasn't surrounded by the fucking poisons and pollution and everything. It was quite pleasant if you're in somewhere healthy, you know, like fla uh, smelling flowers and things. It was quite pleasant. I like, but when I had to like walk into a um, home improvement store or something, you could literally like smell that fucking pesticide aisle, like you know, like however far away, 50 meters away at the end of the store, and it was like walking through the fucking valley of evil. Living in the countryside was absolutely fucking horror. And with the, you know, with that chemical um, sensitivity and being sensitized and whatever it is like the naturopath said it's like when your system is just so overwhelmed with toxins he reckon that's what caused it but I, I think it, it is probably something to do with the auric field as well your electrical field being pierced being damaged from all the interruptions with frequencies I could at least talk to the naturopath about it which helped greatly you know, because when there's that fear and stress and anger with the mainstream doctor, because you're not allowed to talk about any of it, and if you do it can go really bad quickly with the whole psych reprisal thing. You know, there's that stress and tension, but at least with a naturopath I felt safe. I felt like I can tell this guy anything and he won't report me. But yeah, in the countryside they'll burn, the neighbours would always be burning garbage, or one fucking plonker, he even burnt like a stack of roofing plastic one time, when there was no wind for like three days and it just sat around the whole fucking neighbourhood, plastic smoke, and no one fucking complained, eh? I was the only one complaining about anything. I shot like time lapses of smoke clouds blowing across the, the property for for a day, you know. There'd be like bonfires to the west, to the east, to the north. And it would always synchronise when there was, you know, like a week of easterly winds, the neighbour at the east would burn something and I think the time's running up running out on this one, so wrap it up, but yeah, there, there was absolute hell living in farmland. It's like the opposite of what you think. You know, the air was air quality was worse. I had to fucking like hightail it to the hills and live in my van. You know, head to Fiordland to get a bit of fresh air. What a fucked up way to live. It was kind of enjoyable, but yeah, pros and cons.